uh, Coach Shane, uh, he was assistant coach in La Lumiere when I was there. Uh, he helped me a lot. He was working out with me. Uh, he, he believed in my game. Uh, over, over, I think, a winter break, I stayed in his house for a couple days. He, like, he was like, like a family to me. So like, when he got a job, he was, kinda, he was talking to me like, hey, like, we have a spot for you if you're really into it. Like, like I, I, I'm not trying to like, make you convinced. I don't know what's your plans, but if you want to come to Nepal, like, we, really, we will need you. Like, we will use you really well, and I think you can get even better. And you know, like I know you want to play for professional, so like I can make you so much better, and we can work together. And uh, it's in Chicago, like I said, it's my host family coaching. So it's just reasonable things for me to do. It? And it's a big East. I mean, it's a better conference. I just came with all the work and preparation I did, and uh, get my first top ten finish as a freshman. Uh, Sometimes really proud of uh, seeing all the hard work be uh, put into that finish and uh, hopefully many more to come. But uh, my dad said you're going to choose one and you're going to just basically put all your time into that and that's what I did and it's not time that I like have to put in but it's time that I get to put in because I love doing what I do. I mean some of the best part is uh, grinding in the off season just not trying to get better. Our coach says that it's been like the hardest working group of guys that he's ever had so just like knowing that there's going to be somebody always biting at the bit to try to squeeze in the lineup. Um, it really pushes everybody uh, to be their best and work as hard as they possibly can. Um, me and my crew uh, spent a lot of time um, behind the scenes um, shooting all these kids going through this transformational process. And during that time, I remember going through excitement, anxiety, uh, joy when they would get their lines right or they would you know you could see them grow um, so a lot of hope a lot of nervousness um, and uh, really a lot of um, you saw a lot of confidence in them grow as they matured in their roles I would say that for sure um, in the process um, of being a storyteller a media maker um, you always want to see um, characters develop and change over time and um, see them go over those highs and lows in terms of you know getting frustrated, um, growing, um, finding you know their voices, finding their performance, and I think um, we went through that with them as the camera crew, um, seeing that every day through the many months we were there. Well, it was definitely a different experience for me. It was um, sort of the first project I'd really produced on, so it gave me an opportunity to kind of step into a different role than what I'd done before. But I did really enjoy getting to talk to. I mostly worked with the parents actually. Um, so that was rewarding in its own way, and it was definitely, I think, a different take on what we were doing. The practice schedule is enormous. It starts at the beginning of May and goes usually to sometime in September for the final performance. Um, they practice anywhere from one to four times a week, depending on what month they're in. And there are about 50 to 55 rehearsals before the final performance. And we were at um, all but three of them. So we were at a lot, and I only missed one. At one point, I had been there more than anyone, not only in our crew, but in um, more than the director, more than the people who brought it to DeKalb, or any single artist or mentor, because I wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything. We had about 10 students throughout the whole process, uh, two under, um, wait, uh, eight uh, undergrads and two grad students. Some specialized in sound, some specialized in camera. Juliana did a lot of the behind the scenes, um, kind of pre-interviewing kind of stuff. Um, and some people took different roles, um, you know, where they did both. They did maybe sound one day, audio, uh, camera the other day. And, um, Juliana, we know that you made a GoPro video, actually, that went along with uh, this theater production. And we were wondering, you know, what was your favorite clip or what was your favorite part about putting together the GoPro video? Well, actually, um, we had one artist that we really focused on with that, um, and he was in a wheelchair. And I think getting to see, to see it through his eyes, I guess, um, because a lot of the time we had the GoPro on him. So in being exposed to his viewpoint of being involved in this production and just seeing it from that different angle was really interesting and was really inspiring, too. Um, well, for me, I'd never worked on a production like this before. Um, as I said before, I'd never produced, but I'd never even worked on a film. Um, that was any bigger than maybe like a class capacity. So it was really exciting to get to do something a little more professional. Um, you know, we're finally premiering it, which is awesome. We're really excited to see it on the big screen. So going through that whole process, I think for me, was just really exciting. 
My most exciting moment on set was during the final show. Um, backstage, I wanted to get a shot of the, the character that, um, character, Justin, who was in the wheelchair, um, smiling um, from behind the curtains. And I wanted to do it by myself on the final um, show. And I remember that was one day I got so emotional, I almost, I got a little nauseous because I was so excited because everything was kind of coming to fruition at that point because we were going to finish, at least with that part of the documentary. And um, so that, during the, the shooting, that was really exciting. Um, and then now, it all coming together and it being shown to the community I tried to showcase is really exciting and nerve-wracking, but really exciting.